Whenever he thought of Rodan Mitchell, the ox came to mind. Loyal, steadfast, diligent, indomitable. These were the classic positive traits of one born in the year of the ox. He had seen in Rodin's personality and, at times, the trajectory of his life and career manifests just as the animal wheel of fate had ordained. Man, oh man, this is one of those episodes that I've been looking forward to talking about for a while. Rodan Mitchell. <laughs> Rodan, Rodan, man. This guy. I feel for him, you know? Because of the three main characters in the novel, I'm going to say he's probably the most important one that readers should pay attention to. Well, why do I say that? Because I think his situation and his arc, his struggles, mirror many of those that millions, if not billions of people around the world, average people, they have this kind of perspective that Rodan has, right? And that's why I wrote his character the way he is. He's, even though he's not, you know, when you think of like an everyman type of character, usually, I'm gonna be honest, you think of like a white guy, right? But you don't usually think of like a black character as an everyman character, but his situation and personality is meant to represent that. I think he's gonna be the most recognizable character to readers, but I also think he's probably going to be one of the most disliked characters. Um, and he's going to be one of the characters that people walk away from the novel evil, either like, no, I'm, I'm not even going to say that because I'm not even going to give stuff away, but I think people are going to walk away thinking about Rodan and what he represented and what his situation was. And, Possibly, if they were faced with a similar situation, what would they do? Have I hyped him up enough for you? For you? <laughs> I mean, bottom line, at the end of the day, he, he's, he's probably the heart of the novel. And one could say that the story and most likely the lessons, and most of the lessons, I'm sorry, I meant to say, of the novel were constructed for people like him. So at the beginning of the story, when we meet Rodan, he's working in a serious liaison facility. So this office is like kind of a satellite office within the California state capitol. Of course, it's fictional, but yeah, they're like a liaison office. And he's working with Gene Wa's father. They're kind of friends-ish, but they have more of like a professional type working relationship within the office. So from a distance, he Rodan looks like a typical middle-aged, middle manager type character. But as the story unfolds, we kind of get to see how his relationship with others and then his relationship with himself affects the story. And I, I don't want to really go into any spoilers here. Of course, I never want to, but especially right now, because um going to be getting the first copy of the book in my hands probably this week, uh, which is very exciting. But yeah, by the time you're listening to this episode, the book may be long out, but it might not be. So yeah, you can just wait to find out the details on your own. So that's all I'll say here about Rodan's character. But what was the inspiration behind the character, you ask? Well, it was funny because I remember a conversation that I had with one of my friends when I first mentioned, oh, yeah, the character's name is Rodan. He was like, from the Godzilla movies, bro? <laughs> and I was like, that's funny because I'd never seen those movies. So I had really no idea. I didn't have much idea what he was talking about. But no, 
Rodan is not based off of the Rodan from the Godzilla movies. So his primary personality is kind of based off of Barrett from Final Fantasy VII. You know, um, he he was the picture that I had in my mind when I was thinking, okay, like of his build and kind of like he's. He's kind of boisterous a little bit, but not as much as Barrett. He's definitely, he got no gun on his arm. He's got two regular hands, like a normal person, but yeah. So I made him a lot more introverted. You know, that's kind of where the comparisons stop because personality-wise, he's, he's not very much like Barrett. He's a lot more introverted. He's to himself. He's a little bit more in his head, but, I mean, he, he's fiercely loyal to the mission and his people. So compared to, you know, using the jumping off from the Barrett template, I made him a little bit older because I feel like older characters are just a little bit more interesting. I mean, just because they've, they've been through more, they've seen more. You know, the young character, when they're young and naive and they don't know anything, that works too. But, you know, I just, I don't know, just a perf personal preference. I prefer, like, dealing with older characters. Because I wanted him to have the perspective of someone who's seen a lot you know in his life he's seen the good he's seen the bad of others and you know you have to find a way to live with that you know just like the times that we're in right now you know with the pandemic and things like that here in the U.S. you, you have to find a way to live with those things and I think when you're older you know when you have a character with an older perspective you can kind of drive that point home So I feel like anyone who's over the age of 30 probably knows a Rodan, and I'm using air quotes over here, type character or type person in their life. And if they don't, you might be them. <laughs> you know, that's what they say, right? If you can't find someone who looks like this, it might be you. But it, it's not all negative. You know, of course, you know, um, people are complicated and Rodan is no exception. This character, he's fiercely loyal, like I said, to his mission and he likes helping people. So, well, what is the Rodan type person? Here I have, you know, stereotyping this Rodan type person. But when I think of like a Rodan type person, I think somebody who's a workaholic, you know, they place their duty or their mission or their organizational role above all else. You know, they're the ones that are like, no, nah, I'm taking this call. I got to, you know, I got to work on the weekends because that's what's expected of me. Not necessarily because you have to. Some people have to, of course, but just because, you know, I, that's what's expected of me. Leisure, personal relationships, physical and mental well-being, all that stuff takes a backseat to the things that I just named. You know, anything to deal with work, money, and status. And companies and institutions, they love Rodan types. You know, they love this because... They, you know, they're workhorses. So they're the ones that you lean on. You know, you've got additional tasks or you've got some type of emergency crisis situation. Your Rodan type person, you know, doesn't have to be a man, of course, could be female. Um, they're the ones that are typically going to, you know, saddle the burden of this. So holidays, nights, weekends, they're any time is <laughs> the time for them to work, right? They're jacks and jills of all trades that have the goal-oriented mindset. The mission never fails when they're around, you know. And of course, coming from my military background, I, I know a little something about this. I may or may have not been a Rodan-type person in the past. <laughs> um, I, I'll tell you, I was at certain points, especially with the job that I was doing in law enforcement. You know, it's just... There's always something going on, and if there wasn't anything going on, the expectation is that you were looking for things that were going on. Because, you know, there's always stuff, you know, going on in the shadows, in the background, and you, and you have to kind of find that. So with Rodin, what I wanted to do with this character in the novel is kind of ask the question and play out the scenario, like what happens when the workhorse or the person that's usually saddled with a lot of the responsibility in an institution, what happens when they burn out? 
what happens when they're forced to, you know, pause and look in the mirror and face, uh, you know, make choices about their future outside of what's organizationally best or optimal. You know, that's what I wanted to play out with this character. So, because this is what happens, you know, when we're in that position, and I'll use myself because I was in that position, you know, when you are given all of your energy and your identity to this organization or you're getting it from this organization, you know, I've talked about organizations and institutions before, kind of how we have this implicit deal with them that we're going to get money, status, fame, you know, sense of self, whatever, but then we're going to give them our time, you know, some of the best years of your life, whatever, you know, however you want to put it. So, yeah, that's what happens because after you're in the organization for so long, like when I was in the military, it, it's hard to see what's up and what's down. And it, you get to the point, so a lot of people do, to where you don't really know who you are or what you're really fighting for. And I think this is a dangerous place to be because when you're in that kind of muddled state, the Rodan type, you know, you're susceptible to all manner of, you know, physical illness, uh, mental stress, burnout, uh, physical ailments. Of course, you get people get sick a lot when they're really stressed out. Um, you become jaded and you may begin to like lash out and try to reclaim that sense of understanding of who you are and what you have really dedicated your life to. And I've seen this so many times in my life with, you know, with family, I think of my brothers, you know, we're all kind of like the other day, my wife, you know, I was telling her that I did all this stuff and, you know, recording and teaching and all this stuff. And she was like, you have to rest, you know, you have to prioritize this stuff. And yeah, I can just get in that mode where I'm just doing stuff and you're kind of just lost in the middle of it. And I've seen it with the military as well. You know, a lot of vets, they get out after X number of years, could be 10 years, could be, you know, 20, 25. And it's like, who's that man and the woman, man or woman outside of uniform? A lot of times, you know, if they're honest with you, they can't tell you nothing. They don't know because it's all been the military for so long. So, yeah, definitely exploring some of these difficult topics about identity when it comes to this character, Rodan in Series Olympic. You know, throughout my life, I've met many Rodan type characters, or should I say people, right? Hell, I've been him a few times, just like I mentioned earlier in this in this recording. You know, and especially on active duty in the military, I feel like there were tons of them. You know, even now as a as a teacher, uh, I see that in education, that there are lots of Rodans, right? People that are just workhorses and that often sacrifice everything for the sake of the job and the mission. Of course, this isn't always a bad thing, right? As I said earlier, these people are often the the cornerstones, the, the load-bearing pillars in these in these organizations. But all people have their limits. And in Sirius and Lemnick, I explore those limits. And I even look try and look beyond them to speculate about what happens to a person that that lives their life like this, you know? And what happens when the the burden becomes a little too heavy and that person has to make decisions about themselves, about others, about an organization. That that's what I show in the novel. I think Rodan is the character that most people who read the novel will 
be able to relate to. But on the opposite side of the coin, I also think he'll end up being probably one of the most disliked characters. Why? Well, you gotta read the book if you want to find out. I'm not gonna spoil it here. Yeah, and that's all I gotta say about that. Music for the Sirius and Limnick podcast was provided by Ryan Fonger. For more information about Sirius and Limnick, visit keithhayden.net and subscribe or follow at kh underscore author on Twitter. For future episodes, subscribe and follow the Sirius and Limnick podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, as well as the Amazon Music app.